In this video, we are going to talk about divergence and curl of a vector field. This is my overview slide about curl, and this much shorter slide is about divergence. We are going to go through the overview first, and then we'll back up and go through each topic in more detail and with more examples. We will start with the definition of curl. So sometimes it's noted curl of F, and again, F is a vector field, and it's the definition is that it is del cross f. So for example, if f of x, y, z is equal to x, x, y, and 1, del, if you recall, is d, dx, d, dy, and d, dz, the partial derivatives with respect to the first, second, and third variable. And then the cross product will take the i, j, and k vectors, direction vectors, and then on the second line, we'll have the partials, d, dx, d, dy, d, dz, and on the bottom line, we'll have f, our definition of f, which is x, x, y, and 1. We do the calculation, and in this example, our curl is equal to 0, 0, y. Curl is associated with rotations. You can think of this paddle wheel. If it's going around this circle, if the paddle wheel itself rotates, so I have these two arrows, one pointing up and one pointing, I guess that would be what, east. As we go around, you can see that the arrows now kind of rotate. So the paddle wheel itself, which is the circle, is sort of circling as well until finally the, the arrow is no longer pointing up, it's pointing down and it's pointing west and then it comes around and it circles. So those are the rotations. If a vector field represents the flow of a fluid, then the curl equals zero means at, at a point P means physically that the fluid is free from rotations at that point. In other words, it has no whirlpools. A small paddle wheel placed in the fluid will move with the fluid, so it'll still move in the circular motion, but this orientation where this arrow is pointing up, it'll stay pointing up all through the circle. And if curl of F equals zero, we say that F, the vector field, is irrotational. It doesn't cause anything to rotate. We have this important theorem. The curl of any gradient is zero. So in other words, if you take the gradient of a uh, function f, and then you take the curl, it should equal zero. So for example, verify the vector below is irrotational at each point and not equal to z uh, at each point not equal to zero zero. So we're not looking at the origin. Note that this is the velocity field this one, this equation here, approximating water in a circular motion such as occurs when you pull the plug out of a tub of water. So this is um, an equation that we talked about in our previous video when we talked about vector fields. And I had that lovely illustration of a tub with water. When you pull it out, it kind of circulates. The water circulates. You've seen that water circulating in a tub when you drain the tub. Even though the fluid is rotating around the drain in this way, if the uh, curl is equal to zero, except at the origin, then the paddle wheel, as I said, the orientation will stay up. It won't rotate. So let's look at this V. When we take the curl of V, we have the I, J, and K direction vectors. Then we have D, D, X, D, D, Y, D, D, Z. Then we have our first coordinate, which is X, x squared plus y, our second coordinate minus x over x squared plus y, there's no third coordinate, so that will be equal to zero. We do the calculations, and we see that the curl of v is equal to zero. So this, again, the circulate, um, this pulling the plug out of a tub and you have the water circulating, it actually has no uh, rotation associated with it. This next example is an example of this theorem that says the curl of any gradient is the zero vector. So the curl of anything that's a gradient is equal to zero. So we have let v of x, y, z equals y negative x, zero. Show that v is not a gradient field. So according to this theorem, if it is a gradient, if v equals gradient of some function f, then when we take the curl, it'll equal to zero. So let's look at the curl of V. So we have our i, j, k, our d, dx, d, dy, d, d, z, and our V is y minus x, zero. When we do the calculation, we get minus two. So in other words, we didn't get zero. So that must be, mean that V is not the gradient of some function f. 
Oh, and here's that note. This is the example we had looked at when we in our previous video about vector fields. So this V represents rotary motion, such as the motion of particles on a record player. The flow lines for the vector fields are circles about the origin, but this velocity field has a rotation, and such a flow, a small paddle wheel rotates once around the origin, as in this illustration here. Now we are ready to talk about divergence. So the divergence of F is equal to the del F operator dot F. So if, for example, if F is equal to x squared y, z, and x, y, z, then thy divergence is the del operator, which is d, dx, d, dy, d, d, z, dot x squared y, z, x, y, z. So d, dx, the derivative with respect to x of x squared y is 2x, y. It's a dot product, so we're going to add. d, d, y, the derivative with respect to y of z is 0. And d, d, z of x, y, z is x, y. So our final solution is 3x, y. If we imagine F as the velocity field of a gas or fluid, then div F represents the rate of expansion. So it's how much the, the fluid is expanding or diverging. That's how I kind of think of that. So it represents the rate of expansion per unit volume of gas or fluid. Flux density, for example, if div is equal to 3, the gas is expanding at a rate of 3 cubic units per unit of volume per unit of time. And if div is equal to 0, so it's not expanding, it's not contracting, we say that f is incompressible. Now that we've looked at an overview of divergence and curl, we will look at each topic in a little more detail with more illustrations and examples. We will start with the definition of the curl. So the curl of f denoted curl of f also with the del cross f. Literally, this is the definition, del cross f. So del, if you remember, is the partial derivative. D, D, it's an operator, which means to take the partial derivative with respect to x, partial derivative with respect to y, and partial derivative with respect to z. So then del cross f, on the top, we're going to have our i, j, k direction vectors, our del on the second line, and then our f on the third line, and f is equal to x, and then x, y for the second coordinate, and 1 for the third coordinate. So here we do the cross product, and I'll let you take a look at that. But the final answer is 0, 0, y. Physically, the curl is associated with rotation. So if f is a velocity vector field, then the rotation of a rigid body in that velocity vector field um, the curl will give you a vector field directed parallel to the axis of rotation with a magnitude twice the angular speed. To show the rotation, so this is my center point, and we're the, any object in this field then, it can circle around, so it's not the circling that curl measures, but the rotation. And by rotation, let's just say we have this little blue disk here, and I put an arrow to show that this is when it's oriented up, and also this side arrow to say it's pointing east. As time progresses, this wheel can travel along the circle, but also you can see that it's rotated because this arrow that used to point straight up is now pointing at the 45 degree angle. Continuing in time, as it travels along the circle, you can see that it, this paddle, this little disc, has rotated further. The, arrow that used to point straight up is now pointing east, and the arrow that used to point east over here originally is now pointing straight down. Going from here to this point on our circle, now this uh, vector is now pointing, what over here was pointing east is now pointing at a 45 degree angle, and what was pointing south is also at a 45 degree angle. Halfway around the circle, and the arrow that used to point up is now pointing down. The arrow that used to point east is now pointing west. We continue along the circle until finally we will come back up to the top. And at the top, this little disk has done a full rotation. If the vector field F represents flow of a fluid, then curl of F equals zero at a point P means physically that the fluid is free from rotations at P. That is, there are no whirlpools, and a small paddle wheel, such as this disc placed on the fluid, will move in the fluid, but will not rotate about its axis, it, this axis being the center of 
the little disk. And we say that F is irrotational. Here is how the disk will travel if the field is irrotational. And the curl at this point will be zero. We have this following theorem that says the curl of any gradient is the zero vector. This next example is this vector field that we had looked at before in a previous video when we talked about vector field. And this equation approximates water in a circular motion, such that occurs when you pull the plug out of a tub of water. And even though the fluid is rotating around the drain, it's not rotating around the axis. So we will show that its curl is equal to zero. So here I have my function v, and then I take the curl of it. And I, to take the curl, I have the i, j, k direction vectors. On the second line, I have my del, d, d, x, d, d, y, and d, d, z. And on the last line, I have v, which is y over x squared plus y squared, and negative x over x squared plus y squared. I'll let you verify the calculations here. But what I'm going to get is 0, 0, 0, which means there, this uh, vector field is irrotational. And this function then, it might be the gradient of another function, but this theorem, it, this theorem doesn't say anything about that. This theorem says if it's a gradient, then the curl is equal to zero. It does not say if the curl is equal to zero, it is a gradient. So this is undetermined. I mean, we could figure it out, but I'm just going to say according to this theorem, we don't know. It's a different situation for this next example, which is let v x, y, z equals y minus x, zero. This is a vector field we had looked at in a previous video, and it represents the motion of particles on a record player. And the flow lines for the vector field are circles about the origin, but this, uh, this velocity field does have rotation. And the small paddle wheel rotates once it circulates around the origin. And we can verify that by looking at the curl. So the curl of V is now i, j, k, dy, dx, dy, dz, and then our function f, which is, or v in this case, y, negative x, zero. When we calculate the curl, we get a non-zero value, meaning there is some rotation, and it rotates as it circles around the origin. Now, by this theorem now, that the curl of any gradient is the zero vector, so what that means is this curl that we calculated, this non-zero number, which is the curl of, I put f here, but I really should have put v, that cannot equal to the curl, the del cross, some other gradient function. Because if it were, if this v were the gradient of some function, then the curl would equal 0 by this theorem. That completes our discussion of curl. And we can continue with divergence. And the definition of divergence, which we notate div f, is equal to del dot f. So curl was del cross f div is del dot f. And an example is to compute the divergence of f of x equals x squared y, the second coordinate is z, and the third coordinate is x, y, z. To calculate the divergence, then, we'll take del cross f, del is our dx, dy, dz, our partials, dot, and then our f, x squared y, z, x, y, z. So then we have uh, the partial derivative with respect to x is equal to 2xy plus, because it's the uh, dot product, partial derivative with respect to y is 0 plus partial derivative with respect to z is xy. So our final answer is 3xy. And the physical interpretation of divergence is if we imagine f as the velocity field of a gas or fluid, then div f represents the rate of expansion per unit. Let's see, per unit volume of the gas or fluid, so also called the flux density. For example, if div f equals 3, then the gas is expanding, and then the, because it's positive, if it were negative, it'd be contracting, and if it were 0, it'd be neither contracting or expanding, and we'd say it's incompressible. But if it, it's expanding, and it's expanding at a rate of 3 cubic units per unit volume per unit of time. The divergence of the curl equals zero. That is, the divergence of any curl is zero. And last, we have the Laplace operator, 
um, which operates on functions, and it's defined as uh, del squared of f, which is equal to del dot gradient of f, which is equal to d2f dx squared plus d2f dy squared plus d2f dz squared, sort of like a second derivative. Reviewing the topics we have talked about, first we talked about curl, which we defined as the del cross f. And we have this example here, if f is equal to x, x, y, 1, then del, which is the cross product of del cross f, would be the i, j, k directions, the del, which is d, dx, d, dy, and d, dz, and then f on the bottom line, which is x, x, y, and 1. We take the cross product then. We said the curl is associated with rotations, and then we said if we have curl equals 0, that means the fluid is free from rotations. It has no whirlpools and a small um, disk will move with the fluid. So the circular motion is not what curl is about. It's about this disk rotating as it goes through the circle. But if it has, if curl is equal to zero, we say F is irrotational. We had this theorem here that said the curl of any gradient is the zero vector. So in other words, the curl or, or del cross, the gradient of F is equal to zero. And this is helpful for us to determine or rule out different fields from being a gradient. So for example, we can verify the vector below, the vector field below with this capital V is irrotational at each point, not equal to zero, zero. And also note this um, velocity, this vector field is one we had seen in a previous video and it approximates water in a circular motion, such as when you pull the uh, plug out of a tub of water. So even though the fluid is rotating around the drain, like this paddle wheel, in this case, this um, disk will stay oriented in the same way, not like this disk is rotating here. So if we have V of xy equals y over x squared plus y squared minus x, x squared plus y squared, then del cross V, again our i, j, k, d, d, x, d, d, y, d, d, z, and then our V here, y over x squared plus y squared, minus x, x squared plus y squared, and then there's no z term, so that's just zero. Taking the cross product, we get zero, 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 meaning that this field is irrotational, and we cannot rule out the fact that it's a gradient field. Whereas this field, v, is equal to minus y, I mean, I'm sorry, y minus x, zero, which we had seen in a previous video on vector fields, was is the motion of particles on a record player, we can show that this is not a gradient field. We can take the curl, so that would be our i, j, k, d, d, x, d, d, y, d, d, z, and then our v here, which is y, negative x, zero. Taking that, we see that the curl is a non-zero. It's zero, zero, negative two, which means that the curl of this field is not equal to zero, so that means this field is not a gradient. We also talked about the divergence of f, which is a, a notated div f, which is equal to del dot f. So our example is if f is equal to x squared y, z, x, y, z, then div f is d, d, x, d, d, y, d, d, z, dotted with x squared y, z, x, y, z, and our final answer was 3 x, y. The physical interpretation of divergence is that it represents the rate of expansion. And then if div f equals zero, we say that f is in, 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 incompressible, sorry. And then we have this theorem, if we have the div divergence of the curl, that's always equal to zero. And last, we define the Laplace operator, which operates on functions. So if we have a function f, the Laplace operator is del squared, which is equal to del dot gradient of f. For review, I have two problems for you to try. The first is to graph the vector field and calculate the divergence of f equals xy and g of xy equal negative x, negative y. Compare or contrast the divergence of f and g. And second, is the vector field f 3x squared z plus y squared, second coordinate 2xy and third coordinate x cubed minus 2z rotational? I suggest you pause the video, give these problems a try, and when you come back, I'll have solutions for you. Here are the solutions to the two problems. 
And that is it for this video. Thank you for watching.